When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, I'll break down. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art, how great thou art. How great thou art, how great thou art. Hi everyone, so just letting you know that we are unfortunately not live streaming yet. Um, the connection keeps timing out, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I am recording the service so we can keep going and I'm recording on my computer. Okay. Okay. So Tim, over to you. Good, good morning, everyone. Glad to see everybody joining in this morning and everything that is taking place in this new adventure. Uh, thank you for joining us online today. We hope that you experience Christ's peace and presence as we worship together from our homes. In order to stay connected with us and receive the latest information, please make sure you sign up for our newsletter, which can be found on the website. Let us move into our uh, call to worship for today. As we have joined together, we do so uh, as a church called, gathered, and enlightened through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it is good for us to be here. As you might know, as you enter into our Zoom website, video and mic are muted, and please keep your microphone muted. If you wish to share, you can on the video screen this morning, and be mindful that everyone, if you do so, can see you. So just like being in church, you can be seen. Also, if you're worshiping through YouTube as well as on Zoom, there is a chat feature available, and please feel free to use that, as we might ask for um, prayer requests during the service. Our worship this morning begins with a verse from Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Again, we hear, for God is with us. God's rod and staff brings us comfort and peace during this time. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, you alone are God. There is no other. You reveal yourself when we live our lives in accordance with your commandments, in accordance with one another, we live those things. We, when we do not endanger our neighbor's life, when we live a chaste and pure life, loving and honoring our spouse and those with whom we are in relationship, and we honor you with an honorable life by not seeking our neighbor's possessions by theft, or dishonest trade or dealing shoddy with one another, but we help one another to improve and protect our means of living and our property. Help us, Lord, to live in you wherever we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us worship. Let us join together in our opening song. Hey everyone, good to see you. Uh, so my name is Joel Larson, I'm the associate pastor. This is my wife, Elisha Larson. We figured since we're stuck in the same house, we might as well lead worship together. So Elisha is gonna open us up with a, a little word and a scripture. Um, as I was thinking about the place of worship in our community this week, uh, a verse kept coming to mind. Jude 1 20 and 21 it says but you dear friends by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit 
keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. And as we're in this time of singing and worship together, it's part of building ourselves up in our faith. God is stirring up our gifts and showing us how to be a blessing in this strange time. Uh, Lord, may these songs call us to keep our hearts tuned to your Holy Spirit and keep us in the truth of God's love now and this week. Church community, let's sing together. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing, and every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to pray. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Oh, yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. When the sun's shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there is pain in the offering, blessed be your name. And every blessing you pour out, I turn back to pray. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, Still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your holy name. You give and take away. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Oh, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Well, blessed be your name. Yes, Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to be with you, though it may seem a little awkward and a bit unconventional for our normal Sunday morning. But it's great to be together with you online and our participants continue to increase. Uh, we actually can see for some of us how many are actually online and it's 
What a joy it is to be together to worship in Christ's peace and presence with you this morning in these unusual times. Uh, please, as I mentioned earlier, I remind you, please stay connected with us by signing up for our church uh, newsletter uh, found on our uh, website. It's one way that uh, we're able to pass information along during these times. You will notice also that our newsletter also looks a little bit different uh, as we've updated the, the layout, and it's going to be coming out on Fridays. That way you can get uh, the most recent information for Sunday mornings and as we worship together. During this season, and it's not just the season of Lent that we want to do this, but more so in this season of worshiping together as we are in our homes and separated from one another, um, we would really like to hear your stories of our faith community, particularly your stories, as God continues to show up in our midst. If you have a story you'd like to share, share please email Pastor Joel or myself, Pastor Tim, uh, so that we can share it with our community. And let us be mindful, watching for how God is working in and through one another during this time. As you know, we're not going to be meeting for worship uh, probably for at least the next month in person. Uh, so this is our opportunity to spread the word amongst one another and to encourage one another uh, in, our, in our areas and where we live and join with one another. Our elders, deacons, and staff have been given a list of congregants who live in their geographical area. And beginning this next week, they're going to begin reaching out uh, with those people in their area to pray and check in. I encourage you to do the same with people that you know in your life. Contact them regularly, pray with them, and share the good news of one another's presence together. As a reminder, every Sunday we share our response to God's love and mercy in Christ by offering what God first gave us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. However, it's a little awkward to do that currently, and so I really encourage you to use the online giving uh, opportunity that is on our website. It's a wonderful way to uh, continue your giving to ministry at FPCH. And I really encourage you to do that. And we give thanks to God and praise for you and your commitment. And now let us turn our hearts to this morning's opening scripture from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Here ends our reading. Amen. All right, we have some kids joining us, and we remember the hand motions, great, big God. Everybody try it. Great big God. Sing this with us. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Oh, hi, everybody. I'm just hanging out here in my pillow and blanket fort. It's a cozy place I made for myself. I feel safe here, protected by all these cushions and blankets, hanging out with my bunny and my Bible. And I built this fort to remember my Bible verse of the week, Psalm 46, verses 1 and 2. God is our refuge 
and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. The person who wrote this psalm uses some big words. God is our refuge. What is a refuge? Well, it's kind of like my pillow fort. It's a place of safety. And God is ever present. What does that mean? It means that God is with us all the time, no matter what is going on. And then the psalmist, the author of the psalm, uses some imagery that can be kind of confusing or even scary. If the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, what could the, what could the author mean by this? Well, think of the mountains. The mountains are always there. They're big and they're steady and we can count on them. And think of the sea. The sea is chaotic and it, it has waves and we can't control it. So if we think about those two things and if the mountains were to fall into the sea, it would be like all of the things that we count on, all of the things that are steady in our lives, all of a sudden, becoming different and chaotic, and we can't control it. I think that's why I love this verse so much this week, because it matches up with what we're going through. Everything is different. All the things we thought we could count on, or a lot of the things we thought we could count on, are just changed. They've kind of been thrown into the heart of the sea. But our God is a refuge. Our God is a safe, cozy place. And our God is ever present. Our God is always with us, even when everything we know has been thrown into the heart of the sea. And so this week, friends, I want you to memorize Psalm 46, verses 1 and 2. And I want you to build your own fort. And I want you to send me pictures. And I want to see your forts that you build. Can you do that for me? Max, Noah, can you do that? Knox's, can you do that? Larson's, Corey's? All right, I'm gonna count on you guys and everybody else that I didn't give a shout out to know that I love you and I can't wait to see your forts. God bless you. All right, faith community, we're going to join together in some prayer now, and we're going to pray through Psalm 23, which was our opening scripture. Let's pray together. Lord, your scripture says, you, Lord, are my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Jesus, lover of our souls, good shepherd of our souls. This is a strange and uncertain time right now for us. We are sheltered in place and distanced from one another physically. And it can feel confining and even dark and lonely. And some of us are feeling that right now. We're feeling lonely. We're feeling depressed or anxious. We feel the loss of our normal lives. We wonder about the future, God. It seems so uncertain. We wonder if we'll have enough, if we'll have enough income, if we'll have enough to keep our businesses afloat. God, we want to be strong. We want to hold it all together. But we confess to you that we are weak and we need you. In the midst of our fears, good shepherd, you invite us into open space. You invite us into light and health and peace in the midst of this. You want to take care of us in this open space. We can rest here being your beloved sons and daughters. We can rest knowing that in you, we will have everything we need. You want to take care of us, and we thank you for that. So we thank you for the freedom that we have right now to walk outside, to see the beauty of creation, to see today's sunshine and the, 
blue scrub jays flying around in this and to smell the orange blossoms god it is such a blessing in this place of open space in you we pray you would breathe upon us your peace and god your scripture says he leads me in right paths for his name's sake Good shepherd, in this open space that you lead us into, help us to turn outward. Help us to be present to the needs of our spouse, of our children, of our friends, our neighbors. Help us to be reaching out to our aging fathers and mothers in the faith who need our care. Help us to remember to pick up the phone, to call, to text one another. God, give us creativity as a church right now to reach out to do the good works that you are calling us as a church in this time. We wait upon you, God. Show us the right ways, the good works that you have for us. Friends, take a moment and just lift up the name of someone you're caring about today or thinking about or concerned about. Lift up their name before the throne of grace to our good shepherd. And God, your scripture says that you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. God, in this open pasture, in this open space, you offer us the bread and the cup of salvation. And God, we confess that we are not worthy to come to this table, to be with you, to fellowship with you. We have not walked as you want us to walk, God. We have not guarded our hearts as you would want. Our eyes have wandered where we should not have looked. Our mouths have cursed. We've spoken untruthfully. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins. Congregation, I invite you to take a moment to confess your sins to Jesus, who is here, ready to give you mercy. Good Shepherd, you lift up your bread and cup to us, this meal, a gracious invitation of forgiveness. In you, Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. We're invited to be with you. We are made well and whole through the blood of Jesus. And God, surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Good Shepherd, we trust in you. We, we pray that your Holy Spirit would stir us, stir our faith, that even now in this uncertain time, even now in this strange time, your goodness and mercy is right around every corner, that your goodness and mercy will follow us as a church. It will follow our families. It will follow us as we are single. It will follow us in our workplace. God, help us to be looking, help us to be mindful, help us to be paying attention to your goodness showing up and help us to share it with one another, to speak it to one another, to encourage one another in this time. Lord, you are our shepherd. You lead us into a spacious place where we can breathe and we can see your goodness. It's in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit we pray. Amen. Church, join us in singing This I Believe. Mm -hmm. Jesus, our Savior, sing it out, church. 
I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Our judge and our defender. Our judge and our defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Ever seated high. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is free and one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Let's sing, I believe. I believe in you. I believe you rose again. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe. I believe. Yes, I believe once again. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in life eternal. I believe in life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints' communion and in the holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Sing it loud. I believe in God our Father. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Amen. We believe in you, Jesus. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us attend to our scripture reading this morning. From the fifth chapter of Deuteronomy, verses 17 through 19. You shall not murder, neither shall you commit adultery, neither shall you steal. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, as we have come to gather in your name, through virtual reality, through new spaces and new times, we ask that you be with us. We ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I wanna do one thing with you before we even start getting into scripture this morning or even start taking the opportunity to reflect upon it. What I'd like you to do is a bit of a brief exercise. 
And no, I'm not asking us to run to the kitchen and get a cup of tea or coffee or, you know, settle down, maybe a drink of water as we go along. That's fine. But what I want you to do this morning as we prepare to take some time to reflect on our scripture this morning is this. I want you to take a deep breath. Hold it for a couple of seconds. And now just release it slowly. One more time. Take in a deep breath. Hold it. Now let it out slowly, releasing your cares and concerns to God. And now as each breath you take this morning, as we reflect upon scripture, or as you go through the week, remember with each breath that God is filling you with the Holy Spirit as you daily live your lives. Centered in Christ Jesus, we come now to reflect upon the word that we have. A word that begins with, what a week. What a week it has been from a week ago last Sunday. If you take a look at the month of March, the first and the eighth of March, when we first gathered together in worship, we were all together anticipating things might be a bit different in a week or so. And then before we knew it, on the 15th of March, there was a group of us, a staff, gathered together in the sanctuary, recording worship for everyone. And since that time, we have gone from recording to using technology for ourselves through Zoom conferencing, through YouTube, through recording and live streaming. What a change in lifestyle. Uh, no wonder people feel a bit... Um, discombobulated would that be a good word to talk about how we feel with things and how they are because we're doing all this in the midst of perpetual pandemic updates uh working to ensure our own needs and our family needs are met and having a new normal thrust upon us and i find that it's at times like this when i take a deep breath and take a step back that I can refocus myself and maybe we can refocus ourselves and remember that God is with us wherever we go. In the opening verses of the book of Joshua, Joshua is reminded of God's perpetual presence as he is given God's command, given marching orders to lead Israel into the promised land. In Joshua 1.9, Joshua hears and we read, God's command to be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. These are the words that Joshua and the nation of Israel have in their minds and in their hearts as they enter into uncharted territory, new land, the promised land. Now, you and I might not be entering into the promised land or have entered in the promised land. I actually think that would be kind of a misnomer right now to think that this is the promised land in the way we are living. But we have entered into that unfamiliar territory. And like the Israelites, we are called to live in a time of uncertainty. Even when we receive something good or new or something that we desire, acceptance into the school that you want to go to, or maybe it's a new job, or you get your dream job, or maybe it's even more so a change in life, the birth of a child or the adoption of a child, or change in just living conditions in general. It can be good things, but even though we receive those good things, we do enter into uncharted territory where we are at. But as we enter into those good things, as well as even things that we don't anticipate like we are today, we rely on past experiences and we rely on God as we walk through them. This past week, as I was thinking about the change in lifestyle for all of us, and in particular for myself, I was reminded that, uh, and I shared this yesterday as we had a session meeting and some of the staff, that I have moved into 
um, not necessarily a good lifestyle, but it's a lifestyle of being in deployment mode when I was deployed aboard a ship. My focus and change in life is upon work, hopefully trying to get some exercise and eating. Now, that can be good or that can be bad. Uh, when I was deployed, uh, if I got four hours of sleep in a row, I was very fortunate because I found myself working and then trying to grab a nap for an hour and then going back to work. It's not really a healthy lifestyle. And so I have to be mindful of how I'm living now in this new time, this new focus. And I must focus on the basics, the basics of living with God and with uh, others in family and that. I have to develop a new rhythm as we all are having to develop a new rhythm. I also recognize that as my family gathered back together that we have maybe moved uh, into some past experience. I've noticed our behavior as we live is how we live through the experiences of typhoons when we were in Okinawa. Now, the difference now is a typhoon only lasts 24 to 48 hours. Today, we don't know what the end date is in close quarters. But as we lived in close quarters at that time, we took on doing a variety of things with one another. We not only watched movies or TV if we had power, sometimes we didn't have power, but we also would break out games, play cards, uh, play board games, um, read, read a book. We shifted the way we looked and made things more basic. We adapted to a new normal during that period of time. In fact, we had such protected because uh, the, the apartment building we lived in, our neighbors and that, we could get out because it was protected. We'd run around and people would be baking in their, their kitchens and that, and people would be sharing cakes and cookies with one another. It was a new normal. It was a new living with one another in a different community. The other thing I remembered in a new normal for us was uh, the elder statesman, Dick Jones, uh, the first funeral home that I worked in right out of college, out of the University of Minnesota. Dick was a tremendous man of faith. And he taught me to pray every time I received a call. He said, when you receive a call, pray immediately for the family, pray at the facility where you're going, Pray for the staff who care for one another. Pray when you get back to, to the funeral home. Just lift everybody up that you have come in contact with, whether you know them or not, in prayer. Pray for families and loved ones alike. As I thought about Dick this past week, I, it reminded me that every day is a new day. Every day has the potential of being a new normal. I mean, if you think about it, when have you had a Groundhog Day where everything was exactly the same? It's not. We have little subtleties throughout life that change how we live and we respond to those subtleties. And it changes the way we live and creates a new normal for us. But in those subtleties of life, in living through um, a virtual reality and connecting with one another through, through telephones and the internet and this morning for worship, it's a time also to connect to God because God is the constant in this. That's what Dick taught me and reinforced every single day I went to work with him. He taught me that in the midst of all that swirls around us, that our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the creator and redeemer and sanctifier is with us wherever we go. This is what Moses was reminded, or Joshua was reminded of, when he was leading the Israelites into the promised land. It's also what Moses reminded the Israelites of in Deuteronomy 5 in the Ten Commandments. He reminded them of God's promise to be with them. And he gave them not just a list for ethical or moral living, but a way of life in the midst of change, of God's daily presence with them. Our new normal isn't just one of more isolation or decreased human physical contact. It's a change in our new normal of how we live one-on-one -on -one in the presence of one another. And in an environment in which we currently have where we don't have group 
gatherings or eating in restaurants or Bible studies where we're physically present, we have God's presence with us through scripture, through prayer, and through one another. I mean, if you just look um, at the numbers that have joined this morning, whether it's on YouTube or Zoom, or even those who will listen to our broadcast and our worship later today or tomorrow, we are still gathered together in the power of the Holy Spirit. We're not alone. As difficult as it may seem, we are not alone. We have each other, and the Holy Spirit is moving in and through each and every one of us. And it's a reminder to us that our new normal is really the normal of Pentecost and God and the Holy Spirit being in and through us. So how does this really look then through our scripture readings of you shall not murder or you shall not commit adultery or you shall not steal as one-on-one -on -one living? Well, if we look at those, it's pretty easy to think and see how those function and work together when we have physical contact or we can be together physically. But what about in our current situation? What does that look like? Well, there are prohibitions challenging us as we live one-on-one, -on -one. and are they considered in the context of our community? And if we look at our community today, that context has changed where we are at and how we live in and amongst our own families. And as we venture out into the stores and the world to get the essentials for living. But one-on-one -on -one living, what does that look like? Well, I go back to Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 48, because here Jesus talks about our one-on-one -on -one living, not just in public community as we see as our norm, but in our homes and families, and even now today as we go out to get the essentials. What I mean by this, Jesus says, you shall not murder. And he says, whoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger for, of judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Racha, shall be in danger of the council. And whoever says, you fool. What Jesus is getting at here is it's a matter of our attitude. How do we think about one another? What is happening with our hearts, minds, and souls with where we are at and living our lives? Anger and saying you're fool are reflections of what's happening internally with us, and how we behave is a reflection of our encounter in living one-on-one. -on -one. A closer example to this or understanding of our attitude is Jesus' response on committing adultery where he says, whoever looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed with her in his heart. It's from the inside out. It's our hearts and our minds that we are to model as Christians to the world. That's the gospel. Pastor Joel touched on that last week when he talked about how we live graciously amongst one another and take care of one another and how we hopefully don't stockpile certain paper products. Um, the majority of us, you've been to a grocery store lately, right? You've, you've seen what the shelves look like. I know that's not real encouraging when you go look at the shelves. They're empty, there's no paper products, there's no meat, there's no frozen food, and little produce as people have gone to stockpiling or hoarding for themselves. It's even difficult to find bottled water for those who need it, at least at this time. I wonder at this time, I really wonder why we need to stockpile and hoard because we still can get out and go to the grocery stores and get what we need. We might want a few extra things on the shelf as we normally do. Let's be honest, we like to have a little bit extra. But there's really no, no need to function as we do. My next door neighbor the other day shared uh, with my wife, Cindy, that she drove up to the grocery store at Camp Pendleton to pick up a few items. And when she arrived at the grocery store, the line to the store was the length of the parking lot. You got in line to go into the store, and it wasn't because they were limiting the number of people in the store, it's because the line weaved up and down the aisles throughout the store. She talked to a, to a woman who had come out and finished her shopping, and that's what she was told is, you get in line now, and in two to three hours, you will have woven yourself through the whole store and be able 
to check out and there's limited supplies on the shelves. Well, at the age of 89, she decided it wasn't worthwhile to stand in line and she'd find another time to go do her shopping or work through those lines. I've never seen or even heard lines that bad, even on paydays. Nothing has changed, at least that I'm aware of. Food is readily available and so are other products. There's no need to be stockpiling, at least that I'm aware of. You may be more aware of something. But why do people see the need to buy more than what they need, to stockpile, to hoard? And as I think about how we're behaving that way, I began reflecting upon today's commandments and how what our behavior towards ourselves and towards our neighbors is reflected in our hoarding of those items of food and paper products to keep more than what you or I might need for a week or two weeks where people are stockpiling for, for months, what they might need on a regular basis. And could be this a reflection of stockpiling or hoarding? And I'm just asking, is this a reflection? Could it be a reflection um, of murder or theft? Could we be harming our neighbor by, by preventing our neighbor having what they all need and what's going on? I'm just posing the questions. Could hoarding endanger our neighbor's lives? Could hoarding dishonor the relationships in our lives? And is it a reflection of theft? Is it preventing our neighbor what they might need to live? Those are the questions that I come about when I look at our commandments, our, our proposals, our prohibitions today. And it's not the way we're called to live as Christians. As followers of Jesus Christ, we're called to love our neighbor. We're called not to do them harm. We're called to help them thrive, not just survive in the world today. We're called to give the gift of life in times of uncertainty and certainty. Now is a time for us to thrive. It's a time not to panic or to be anxious because as we enter into unknown territory, we know one thing for sure, one guarantee we have, and that's the promise of God to always be with us. We know God is always with us. I know that because I look at the bottom of my gallery page for Zoom right now, and I see we have well over 100 people right now on Zoom participating and worshiping in community. That's a big change of life. Will we want more people? Yes, we want to see it grow weekly, but over 100 people have gathered together right now to live stream, to be community with one another. That's the Holy Spirit. God is with us. This isn't even mentioned. I can't see YouTube, what's going on on YouTube. But later on, more and more people will join with YouTube and the recorded and all that. And I think Barnaby, I, I don't remember what numbers he gave me last week, but I think over 500 people actually viewed our recorded worship last week. Over 500. And we're on the internet, so it's not just in Hollywood or L.A. We're talking people have viewed and worshiped with us throughout the country, if not throughout the world. That's the Holy Spirit. That's what's taking place right now. That's what we rejoice in. What an exciting time in turbulent times to be as we see a Pentecost moment with the Holy Spirit moving through us. And yes, we have to move, even still more so, be more intent on calling one another, on checking up on one another. But that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Because we are reminded of new skills that we, in doing so, that we are not alone. That God is with us. As we depart from here, there's one final thought I want to leave with you as Jesus Christ has called us to live with one another in community, to live one-on-one. -on -one. One. When I graduated from high school, I was given a, a devotion book 
for college students by some dear friends, friends, the Skalgis. And in that book, one of my favorite devotions was devotion number seven. And it gives a prescription for living in the new normal as we seek God's presence and God's security in these times. In that devotion was a, is a poem quote, quoted, written by John Oxenham. And this is what I'd like to leave with you today. Not for one single day can I discern the way, but this I surely know. Who gives the day will show the way, so I securely go. To God be the glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tim. It's good to see everybody on the chat, and it's been really neat to be in worship together just this way and seeing everybody come in to the meeting. Cornerstone is our last song, and I was thinking about, you know, we're not in our church building right now. We all know that. Um, and we always point to that cornerstone that our, that our church was built upon in 1923, right outside the corner of Gower and Carlos, 1923. But now we know Jesus is our living cornerstone, the one who we are building our lives around. We're the church. We love our sanctuary. Boy, do we miss it. But we're even more than the building. We are the church of God. We are his church, his people, and Christ is our living cornerstone. So let's sing this out right now. My hope is built on nothing less. Mm -hmm. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Sing Christ alone. Christ alone. Cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Let's sing it out wherever you are. When darkness seems to hide His face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anger holds the man the man. My anger holds with man the man. Oh, Christ alone. Cornerstone, weak made strong, in the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Sing Christ alone, Cornerstone, Christ alone, Cornerstone. Weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When He shall come with trumpet sound, when He shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I now. In him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne, faultless stand before the throne, oh, Christ alone, cornerstone. Strong, the same as the 
is our cornerstone first pres faith community he loves us he's with us he's binding us together right now and through this week amen amen as you go through the week know that you are not alone that we are bound together through the power of the holy spirit and god has placed his name upon each and every one of us may the lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. God bless and have a great week.